face is falling down because 500 is going to go in the neck. So, you know, my ass can only take so much. You're right. Uh, up that ass! Uh, come on. Hock work, hock work, hock work, hock work. Up yeah! Kick it. Alright, let's get it! That ass! Can only take so much. Fit, fit. Come on. Hock work, hock work, hock work, hock work. The Eagles are trying to. Uh, did I just say what I think I. Uh, did. Pause! No dick! Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Man, it is Saturday. We're one day away from finally getting back on the field. It seems like it has literally been forever since we played. And... It has been so crazy that we've had so many different things that have transpired that we literally forget about some of the madness that's happened. You know, it was Jerry Jones saying we couldn't afford Derrick Henry. And then it was, no, he didn't fit our system. And, you know, and, and he's right. Derrick Henry did not fit our system because, you know, he's only 873 yards on 134 carries, which works out to 6.5 yards a carry with eight TDs, okay? And, you know, that just does not work because uh, when you, you have a Derrick Henry, you got to give the ball to Derrick Henry, which would be just a terrible thing. I'm going to say it's a terrible thing. It's so much better that we got Rico Daddle, who's got 246 yards on 3.9 yards a carry. We are so much better off with that but there may be a change of foot and today is the day we will find out if in fact we are releasing the kraken we hope that he's the kraken that dalvin cook may be activated and elevated to the 53-man roster and maybe just maybe after him literally being on the practice squad for six games that we'll finally see him and see if he does, in fact, any, have anything. Maybe, okay, let, let me let me just play crazy here, uh, which is what I do here on the Jet Blue Sports Report. Maybe they know what they have with Dalvin Cook, and they said, you know what, we're going to save this for something special. We're going to debut it when we go against our nemesis, the San Francisco 49ers, that we're going to go ahead and get a little oomph right there because they won't know how good Dalvin Cook is. Maybe, just maybe, that's the case. Or maybe they just like, well, we just don't know if he's going to. Maybe, maybe he's just, he's he's washed, and we just need to change the narrative and just throw somebody else. I, I don't know what it is. But I hope, for our sake, that he can come out here and give us a boost. I just do. Now, we, of course, are on Sunday Night Football. We are them boys, which means we get all the publicity and things that we are in high demand. And of course, again, another primetime game, even though we haven't done shit. Um, I have not seen this, but C.D. Lamb is being interviewed for Sunday Night Football by Jason Garrett. We've had Dak Prescott going on about basically saying it's bullshit, uh, saying that it's the fans um, messing up the team with the tours and stuff. You've got CD Lamb kind of saying, yeah, it is a distraction. And, and maybe, yeah, that's, that's part of the problem. I'm curious how he responds to this interview and how he accepts any responsibility on uh, the way the season's going and so on. So let's go to that right now and hopefully we won't get copywritten. Get it presented by the Farmer's Dog. CD, great seeing you, man. Nice to see you. Hey, tell me about the bye. Did you guys get a chance to relax a little bit and get recharged for the stretch run? Absolutely. Uh, had time to take off, obviously. It was crazy the first six weeks. So uh, good good to really just relax, uh, compose ourselves, and um, get back to work now. Yeah. Hey, Drew Pearson, Michael Irvin, the Des guys. Bryant, the guys. CD Lamb. 
Wearing number 88 for the Dallas Cowboys is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Talk about what it's like to be in that elite group and what it means to you. It means a lot, obviously, shows character. Um, along with that is a lot of expectations. So uh, I put that on myself, obviously, but uh, just having it well known and then just carrying on the legacy of those guys and what they've done and the success they've had with the jersey number. I mean, yeah. it's been amazing. Um, it's been a fun ride and it's, we're just getting started. What have you learned from those guys and interactions with them? Oh, a lot. It's different interactions. Let's start there, okay? Uh, obviously, you have three different characteristics and energy levels from all three <laughs> so of them. So, they got uh, energy now. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, no, it's, it's quite fun. You learn a thing or two um, from guys that have had much success in this league and um, yeah. on and off the field, business movements and um, things of that nature. So, uh, I keep in touch. Yeah. Hey, the standard is high here with the Cowboys wearing 88. The spotlight's bright. Right. Uh, talk about what that's like and, and what's great about it and what sometimes can be challenging about it. Uh, as you said, the spotlight's bright. That's, that's one of the great things. And obviously, one of the bad things, the spotlight's bright. So the win, lose, or draw, you're always you know, one of the guys that's going to get brought up for whatever. And that's one of the roles that I've, I'm willing to take on. You know? So uh, whatever happens, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the, you know, the reason, and I want to be part of the solution as well. Please so uh, with that... Um, I've understood, I've understood 88 is definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest. So uh, just carrying on that tradition, that legacy, it means a lot to me. Um, shout out Jerry for that. Yeah, that's great. Um, you played Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago. Mike Tomlin, their head coach, says CeeDee Lamb is as good as anybody in the NFL with the ball in his hands after the catch. What does that make you feel like? Um, it means a lot. Uh, I take a lot of pride in it. Um, honestly, when I... When I play, I feel like the play hasn't started until I get the ball. So um, obviously getting open, getting running defined routes, and um, just continuing to keep, keep my quarterback comfortable with me out there on the field. So uh, along with that, when the ball gets in my hands, that's when the party starts. Yeah. What's your mindset when you get the ball in your hands? Let's go score. I don't let's care where from. Yeah, let's, let's go, go score. score. Let's do that. How, what, how many ever guys it take, let's get as much out of this as we can, and then we'll start over. Yeah. Okay. Three and three after six games. Describe how the season has gone so far. Um, so far, obviously, we want to be undefeated, but realistically, we've had some tough, tough some tough challenges, tough games at home. Um, it's been it's been a tell of two halves. I feel like away we hold it down. Home we gotta we gotta come on. You know, um, we have our we have our crowd. We have our people behind us. Cowboy Nation. We we owe them some wins at home. But um, with that, I feel like. These away games has been very defining moments for us, and the camaraderie with, between us and the belief that we have in this team um, is only going to get better. It's only going to build, and with that, start when we get a time. You know, it's, it was historic the last couple of years playing at home, 16 and one. Any explanation for why it's flipped? Explanation, no. <laughs> but I do know mm. that we need to be more profound in our in our game. We gotta make these routine plays. We gotta stay above the sticks. It's like small things that I feel like we can we can just nudge up. You know, it's not something drastic. It's not anything obviously the game gets away because we get so far behind. But if we stay ahead of the sticks, stay ahead of the game, mm -hmm. stay on pace, we'll match anybody. Yeah. Last year a, a bludgeoning to San Francisco forty two to ten mm -hmm. the week before the bye. You're a little bit outspoken after the game, and you guys come back, and you guys play unbelievably well on offense the last part of the season. Uh, what's different between when you guys were on the run and where you guys are right now? Um, we got to start over. Uh, I feel like the bye week was like a refreshment for us. Um, let's get back to who we are. Let's get back to what we know, and let's win ball games, regardless of running the ball, catching the ball, blocking. Let's just play routine football, starting from – Everyone, to be honest, it can't you can't just single out anybody. We we all know that we're in this together, tackling, things of that nature. Let's just get back to the basics, and then with that, we'll move forward. Mm -hmm. You and Dak on a historic pace in the early part of your career, but it's been different. Any explanation for that? Uh, yeah, obviously, it's well known now that me and Dak is 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 a nice duo. Um, yeah. We complement each other well. Yeah, to say the least. That, and that's uh, the only duo. With that, we know it's a game of adjustments. Whoever can adjust the most, they win the game. So with that, this bye week, we definitely made some adjustments. And um, we're going to look to attack these defenses from different areas. And that's where the fun in, is in the game. You've used the word fun a few times. I've heard you say out loud that, hey, I play my best when I'm having fun. 
If you watch the Cowboys, there have been some frustration on the sidelines. The sure. cameras love to zoom in on it. Sure. There was something in Pittsburgh a couple of weeks ago about, hey, throw it high to me. Talk about that frustration, how that fits into having fun, and how you and Dak can communicate on the sidelines to guys be your best. So the frustration comes from the competitive level, obviously, of the work that we put in throughout the week, right? And if he has some frustration, he's going to come tell me and vice versa. It's not that we're beefing. It's not that we're arguing. It's not that we're anything of that negative nature. I've been you know? on so, a few of these sidelines. Right. So works. like, <laughs> exactly. So you understand the, yeah. the, the vibe, you know, and um, it's constructive criticism. And it's not that I'm beating him or bashing him or any of anything of that. It's more so like, let me help you and vice versa. You help me, you yeah. know, and let's as a unit move forward and um, I'm given options of what I see and vice versa because him at quarterback is not the same view as me as receiver. I have one guy in front of me and no one's attacking me, obviously. Oh, yeah. But like as for him, he got five, 10, 300 pounders for, you know, big guys up there blocking and some trying to wow. attack him. He has a lot of things going on through his head. So different point of views. You know, and I feel like with in that, other words, that, he's that pointing out the struggle as a unit. Did missing camp have anything to do with maybe you guys not being quite as aligned early part of the season? Absolutely, I'm gonna be truthful, and I will say like it's not gonna be just a pickup from what we were at the end of the season last year. But with everything, the work that we've had built up, we'll be fine. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, every coach. Every team, guys talk about eliminating the noise. Mm -hmm. You try to do that, focus. Mm -hmm. um, let me just tell you what the noise is. One of the greatest players in this organization's history, Troy Aikman, comes out and says, the Cowboys wide receivers don't run good routes. CD mm -hmm. Lamb's got to get off the ball better. When you hear that noise, how does that land on you and the group? Uh, me as a leader, obviously, I take it in. And um, we got to work. That's just more, I use it as a, as a building block. Mm -hmm. Like if you say that our routes are lazy, things of that sort, let's go out here every week and I'm gonna show you that my routes, you know? So personally, I take that as, again, cr constructive criticism. You can't really take everything personal in this, in this realm of work that we do, especially some things that we can control. So if we can control it, let's go out here, work at it and continue to get better at it. You know, so for me, I go work. I'm a hard worker. You know what I'm saying? So anything that you say that I'm not doing, I'm going to show you that I am doing it. So you you're motivated by the noise. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, no that's doubt. great. How about some more noise? I've said this out loud. The Cowboys have been such a physical team through the years. Mm -hmm. They're not very physical right now. They're not right. running the football. Did they're not stopping the run. Did he just say they're soft? Right. What do you say I think to he that? just said they're soft. I agree. And oh, man. I mean, we're not, we're not oblivious to the truth now. Like, we understand the things that we have to correct. And week in and week out, we're looking to correct it. And we've been harping on it, we've been heavy on it, and we're looking to making those changes as we go further throughout the season. We can't make all those changes in one week. Granted, that's the team we are. We are the physical ground and pound, and if we need it, if we need to throw the ball, we will, we can. We have the guys to do it, we have the guys that's gonna get open. And um, again, I have no doubt about it. I know that we're gonna make those changes. I know the team that we are. You're right. The, week, the work that we put in, again, continu in continuous weeks, like just, the work, the effort, the energy, the time, like this is not anything that we're just going to go out there and just BS, if you will. Yeah. Cowboys 49ers, what does that rivalry make you think of? It's elite. Um, it's it's top tier. Uh, you got to beat them. He's been in this league for five years now. I've seen it. Uh, I know it is, it's, it's a different game, different physicality. Obviously, you got NFC that plays a part into it. So uh, the rivalry, it hits different. Tell me about the 49ers defense. Them boys are physical, and that's point blank. You gotta, you, when you're going in to play the Niners, you gotta bring your hard hat, and that's just point blank, period. You know the guys that they have out there on defense, you know who is led by. So he's a, he's a nice player, and we know what we gotta do to. You got a couple, the, we got a couple nice players. Talking actually. about that guy in the middle? Yeah, <laughs> the leader. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. So what's the key to this game? Go out there and match their physicality, and not so much match it, just go out there and be us. Uh, I feel like once you start playing to the opponent's game, that's where you lose. Let's go out there, play our game, be physical, run the ball, throw the ball, have fun, and knock some heads. <laughs> but obviously, end of it all, let's win the game. Amen. How closely do you watch the other great receivers, Jefferson, Tyree Kill? How closely do you watch those guys every week? Uh, that's funny. 
Um, but nah, it was, a, it was quite the experience, quite honestly. Um, uh, the whole doubt situation was definitely unique, but happy for those guys. You know, they got what they deserved and life altering and changing moments for them financially and the things that they've done up to this point, you get rewarded and appreciate it. So um, it was huge and I was happy for them, very close. Do you watch the box score of those guys each week? Do you watch their tape? How no, I watch the tape. I watch the tape. Part. I watch the tape. I love football. So I'm a huge football guru. I love the guys, um, especially as the guys that's very talented at my position. You know, so uh, I have no hate towards them, no bad blood. It's all work. And I am a huge fan of somebody that's elite at what they do. So the guys like Justin Jefferson, you got Jamar, Devontae, Tyreek. Unique skill sets, different at their own work in their own craft. So uh, for me, it's, I mean, I'm watching them guys. I'm seeing how they getting open. I'm seeing the things that they're doing to get open. I'm seeing how they line up, mannerisms. The list could go on and on. As accomplished as you are, are you stealing moves from them? I wouldn't say stealing moves. <laughs> but I will say I'm, I'm very intrigued as to what are you doing? You know, so um, with that, you still, you, you, can, you can never not learn. You know, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of that. I'm a learner of the game, and um, I admire it. Yeah, I've heard you say football is your sanctuary. What does that mean? Which means when I wake up, that's the first thing on my mind. How can I get better at this? Um, when I go to sleep, before I go to sleep, how can I get better at it? You know, so uh, it's, it's the will to grow at this game, the knowledge I want to learn, the things I want to do, the movements I want to get better at, the effort. All of those things, it's so much more to this game that you can give than just scoring touchdowns to show your respect. Tell me about your relationship with Dak on and off the field. It's my man. As soon as I got in, obviously, in 2020, it's been, it's been up ever since. Unfortunately, like my rookie year, it was six, so I felt like we were always behind on everything, catching up, um, hanging out, uh, just running routes, working together. So, like, ever since he's been back, it's been a ongoing, like, what you doing, where you at? Like, I'll pull up, like it's been a whole, like that's my guy. Like it's been, it's been that since. And that's why we're so comfortable with each other that we feel like we can talk to each other yeah. any kind of way, you know what I'm saying? It's a brotherly love. That's like. great, that's great. It's a great relationship to have between quarterback and receiver. It's my man. Uh, okay, let's be honest. No Micah Parsons, no Demarcus Lawrence, no Deron Bland, right. okay. Brandon Cooks is out. Right. I mean, those are significant players on your team. How For do you sure. overcome that? Next man up, you got to build the confidence within the guys behind them. Obviously, we know who we're missing. Those are big pieces and very valuable to this team and this organization. And we know we all know what they can do, uh, proven players. But it's all about like the game isn't going to always be on your proven players. It's about the guys that's behind them or next to them. Um, you got to build them up. And we're only going to get as far as as good as they are. And we understand that. So for me, being in the receiver room, just implying the knowledge like implying the confidence like bro you can do this like you got here on your own talent on your own behalf and belief within your skill set so like go show the world bro don't be shy like just yeah. go out there have fun just be yourself and play free we'll worry about everything else tomorrow when we watch film like just just go do you feel like you take on a bigger role as a player and as a leader when those guys are out Absolutely, um, because they need someone to lean on. They need the confidence. Like, we go out there, I'm telling them, like, I'm out there with you. You don't have to worry about the other side because I'm doing my thing. Just worry about you, and trust me, we're, we're going to be successful. So with that, I just want those guys to just, just go out there and play carefree. You do that, you never know what kind of play you might make. You might do some superheroes type, you know? So it's, again, instilling that confidence, um, man, just... I'm making sure that they're out there ready to play. Yeah. When you wear 88 for the Dallas Cowboys and the standard's high and the spotlight's bright, there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Do you for embrace sure. that? Is that when you're at your best? Absolutely. I love the pressure. Um, if anything, I is no more pressure than I've added already on myself. You know, just going throughout this, this whole ordeal, and as soon as I put the 88 on, I already knew what it was. Like, it's not just a one-moment situation. It's any time I'm out there, I'm, I'm representing more so, more than just myself. Obviously, my family, the guys who wore the jersey, have the star on my helmet, and everything else that's outside of that. So, uh, yeah, no, it's fun. And I say fun, and with that, I, I take it to the chin every time. When you close your eyes and reflect back on one year ago, 
coming off that big loss to the 49ers, and you look at what you guys did after that, do you see the same things happening this year? I do, and I have no doubt about it. Um, and why do you say that? Just because I know, I know, the, I know the players that I have in this locker room, and I know, I know the end goal. We all, we all on the same thing. We've had plenty of meetings. We've had, I mean, you can only meet so much, right? But just going out there and having the the confidence, the swagger, the vibe, um, it's it's different. It's some things that you just can't teach. It's some things that you just can't always talk about. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that those guys feel exactly how you feel, and show it. You show it. The confidence goes through play. If you play good, I'm telling you, you're gonna feel you're gonna feel phenomenal. Great, it's awesome. Thanks, CD. Appreciate you. Interesting, interesting. Um, I, I, what I liked about that was he didn't really put blame on somebody else. That it seemed like he accepted responsibility, and he also admitted the struggle that Dak Prescott has. Basically, saying, "Look, I got one guy in front of me. Uh, I got one guy to beat. Dak's got five guys that are coming to try and kill him." And he's got to survey the field. That that actually made me respect C.D. Lamb a bit more. And um, hopefully, hopefully they're able to get themselves together and find a way to get a win. All right, you good people, as always, you know I appreciate each and every one of you guys. We have our, our members live stream at 5 o'clock today, so hope you guys tune in for that. And we will be seeing you guys real soon. I appreciate it, as always.